Today, we will be going over basketball adapted for individuals with cerebral palsy. A couple things you will need for these activities are different colored flat cones, as well as a medicine ball and basketball. We first begin by instructing on how to dribble with a single hand for an individual without cerebral palsy. Key notes here are for feet to be shoulder width apart, back slightly flexed forward, knees partially bent, and dribbling waist high. Keeping your eyes on the ball will ensure ball control throughout your dribbling. Ensure to practice both hands as one individual may have a more dominant hand than the other. The next component is adding a cross dribble. The main focus here is to keep your eyes on the ball and bounce the ball at the midpoint of your body. This will ensure that you don't bounce the ball too far away from your body and out of control. Next, we will add in movement while dribbling. Initially beginning with single hand dribbling and moving into the cross dribble. Again, maintain your eyes on the ball and back slightly bent forward. Throughout the event, be sure to remind the participant to not rush and to take his or her time to complete the drill. Finally, we will add all components together in a weave drill. The participant should try to maintain the ball on the outside hand by using the cross dribble that was practiced earlier. Now we will go through the same drills but with modifications to accommodate for someone with mild cerebral palsy. We will be using a larger medicine ball to ensure greater surface area to dribble with. While static, ensure the individual decreases the pace of dribbling to ensure they do not activate any extension reflex that they may be caused by cerebral palsy. During this time, provide positive feedback for their progress. The next progression will consist of walking forward while dribbling. Again, the biggest concern is to ensure the participant walks slow and dribbles slow to maintain full control of their dribbling. Once they have mastered this technique, we can move on to the cross dribble. Here they will focus on taking their time and keeping their eyes on the ball. Once again, ensure to provide positive feedback throughout their progress. Finally, we will combine all skills into one final drill, the weave. Here, the participant will dribble through the cones, maintaining control of their ball throughout the weave. If the participant has difficulty switching hands, then they may use just one hand throughout the weave. Be sure to remind them to take their time, keep their eyes on the ball, and always give positive feedback. The final modifications for someone with cerebral palsy will include a decreased ball weight, 
will require less muscular effort and activation, increased ball size, which will make it easier to manipulate through static and dynamic movements, increasing the distance between cones to allow more room to move for someone with altered gait issues, as well as flat cones to ensure there are minimal tripping hazards while the individual is participating. Thank you.